Hey, 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 Paul. Paul, right? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's nice to talk about the movie. Always. Yes, and it's nice to have your movie in the festival. Thanks for submitting it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, we're just getting rolling here, people. So let me just make sure you're okay with recording this, uh, Paul. Yep. Cool. Right on for all your fans and audiences out there and the people want to watch this after the movie. Uh, <laughs> Okay, we are recording. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the 24th San Francisco Independent Film Festival 2022. Uh, I'm Jason Wolos, a programmer here at SF Indie Fest. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are very fortunate. You probably just finished watching the movie we're going to be talking about, Landlocked, and we are very fortunate to have the director here, uh, Paul Owens. Paul, how you doing? Good, good. As long as you watched it, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this will kind of live on the uh, interwebs, so maybe people might not have watched all of it, but uh, chances are they watched the movie and then they're watching this. So we're happy to have you guys here. So thanks for giving back to the audiences, too, that uh, took the time to watch your movie. And I know they enjoyed it. Hopefully they enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was very clever. I'm a filmmaker myself, and I'm a little bit, um, I don't know if jealous is the word, but like, damn, good idea. He came up with it, and I, I'm, uh, I admire that for you. Uh, well, Just steal it. Just steal it. Uh, <laughs> right. All art is stolen, right? No one's seen it. Yeah. But, uh, but very creative, um, as well as, um, let's say, haunting as well. Um, Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. So let me, and some of these questions might seem simple or obvious, but, you know, uh, we got to get inside your brain and what went on in making this clever movie. Uh, first, I want to ask, and I can kind of make up my own idea, but I want to hear from you. Where'd you get the name Landlocked? What does Landlocked mean? Oof, goodness. I mean, um, partially, it was just always a word I liked and wanted to use in a movie. Um, oh, really? <laughs> that's the boring answer. But I think if you watch it, I think it um, it makes sense. I think it makes sense. But I don't know. Originally, it was just like, I love that, that word. I want to make a movie or something that has that word as a title and this is going back 30 years now. So finally I got to use it for, for something, but I think well, it makes well, sense too. Yeah, no, it makes sense for sure. But I mean, it could have been so many, it could be titled, the movie could have been titled so many other things. Um, but, um, know. but, but, you know, it's funny, you had that title and you were hanging on to it till you found the story. And then you had your footage, your home found footage, if you will, mm -hmm. that, you probably, you know, when you originally shot that or it was filmed, you had no idea to be reincorporated this way. No idea. Yeah, I don't think my dad had any idea either um, when he was just recording them. It was just, yeah, it's just the family's home videos from maybe around like 87 to 96, like nine or oh. 10 year span. Or so, yeah. So, so um, w when did the spark or the inspiration hit? Like, and tell me about yeah. what inspired you for this movie. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of after college. I wasn't doing anything and it was just a rotten period of time. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I moved back in with my dad at his place. And um, this was kind of just, I don't know, just trying to make sense of my life at that point, because I go on away to college and tried to become a different person and like some film dude or something. Who knows? But Wait, uh, what, you, what, what were you studying? What were you trying to become? What would you go to college for? Film. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, and then where, where was college and where was home? I'm just trying to. Oh, uh, Drexel university in Philadelphia. And I grew up in Jersey. Got um, it. That's where we shot the movie at my childhood home. Right. And um, so I got back and was just sort of like, not sure what to do and how to move forward. And then I found these old home videos at my dad's place and was just like fascinated by them and wanted to use them somehow. And originally I just thought maybe it would be just the story I'm, I'm living through right now. Just like someone comes back home and one scene would be, maybe he's looking at videos and somehow that one scene became this whole movie somehow. And yeah, just the, I, I, the idea just sort of seemed obvious at the time because I'd look at a video of like, here's my dad when he's this age and here he is now. And then here's like the house then and now it's falling apart and it just seemed to make so much sense like oh this would be a good way to to use well, the footage you know, in a new way 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, a lot of filmmakers got their start with home movies, if you will. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, my grandfather shot regular eight movies and super eight movies. And, you know, they've always inspired me. But um, did you have the idea for, can I call this a horror film? You know, for, sure. for you know, um, kind of this genre of film. Did, did, you didn't set out to make that, did you? Or did it kind of, did the footage tell you? You know what I mean? It seemed like it wanted to be spooky, for sure. <laughs> so, um, but I think it just, if I'm making a narrative movie, it just seems like that's, that's kind of where it kind of trends towards and the horrific stuff and the scary stuff. And I don't know. And the footage, just looking at the footage was a sad, it was a sad thing. And I don't know, it was more loss than, than looking at it and being like, oh, nostalgic about it. It was more just like something's really wrong. So yeah, it felt right. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you can look at this film on many levels, many different kind of um, metaphors, if you will. Uh, speaking of nostalgia, I mean, whether you intended that or not, but it's wonderful that the movies become more something more than just, you know, uh, what you set out to make. Uh, you know, it could be a lesson of like, don't get trapped in nostalgia. Right. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's more a lesson for myself, really, to remember because I have that I had. I had that problem a lot, even just coming back to the house and being obsessed with these videos. I was just like, it was like kind of just a way to use it and hopefully move on. But um, I still find that it is difficult. So, yeah, I, I think it, it's part of humanity. It's part of, you know, human nature to do that, to, especially as you get on in years, you kind of look, you're looking more backwards. Right. But, um, uh, you know, it just was um, fascinating that was that the house that you the house you used, I know it was your house. Is that the house you came back to after college? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's and, all all the home videos, all the the house, the property, all the all the actors are the are the family, and it's all everything that you see is is totally genuine. So, so um, you know, because it's very haunting too when he looks through the camera for the first time. Well, actually, it's not haunting. But it's a good haunting you know he sees himself falling in the river swinging into the lake or whatever mm -hmm. and uh you know it's um sweet bygone innocent times like it was kind of it's nice right it, we didn't know it's going to turn the way it turned yeah yeah that's how stuff starts right it's nice and then it gets gets bad when you go overboard <laughs> so yeah that was i feel like it's maybe more relevant now just with it seems like there's so much nostalgia in movies just in general so um, we actually shot it a couple of years ago, so it's been a little while, but I feel like maybe it, it makes more sense now even. Sort of. Did you find the movie in post, look at the footage? Like, did you write a script or was it a combination? Like, tell me the process of making this movie. I mean, there were quite a few scripts. I mean, the first script didn't even have the camera in it. It was more just like what I was talking about, just like kind of around the house and weird stuff would happen and there was no camera. And then, you know, I um, actually wrote the first draft in like 2006. So it's been a long time coming. Like, I kind of wrote it. And like, you were, you, know. <coughs> you were writing the script without the found footage notion yet. That was the first draft, and it wasn't very good. <laughs> so okay, um, well, first drafts never usually are right. But um, but then, like, so then you found the home videos, and that's when you incorporated them. Yeah, it was a slow process, you know, and I'd work on the script, you know, once a year to kind of drag it back out and revise it. And then 2014 is actually when we shot it. And then, yeah, just over the last eight years, I've just, it's kind of more like a hobby almost. I was just, just been editing it just whenever I have time or long weekends or just whenever. And so you had, you had your kind of your, your structure, your blueprint, and then you had to kind of find. Sort right, of, yeah. It. Yeah, but I usually make documentaries, so it was like kind of more of a documentary process where it was, it felt like that. It didn't feel any, it didn't feel like I was making a narrative. It felt like, oh, was, the same tricks would apply to this, so. Yeah, I felt like the scene where the character, um, who are the actors and the characters, playing the characters in your movie? Uh, well, I play myself, and then Mason plays himself. It's my brother, Mason, and then Seth, my other brother, he plays the other brother, and then Jeff, my dad, he plays the dad. And then my mom plays the woman that comes by the house early so it's on. It's a family affair. It's all your family. All family, yeah. And then my cousin played the girl in the closet. So, and then, yeah. So everyone's a family member. Basically. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's cool. That's cool. That, I mean, that, this is this is the true approach. This is how you should like 
You should write a, a how to make your first uh, independent movie book. Uh, this is how to do it. Um, but uh, so, um, you know, when you were editing these at home, did you kind of just like go nights where you're, you know, I, I felt like the character that you play in the, in the room where he's categorizing and labeling and organizing. And um, I felt that was a real moment or a, a true to life scene. That's just my documentary life. Yeah. Just dark rooms and uh, footage and stuff. So that just, that just made sense to me, I guess. I don't know. Was that, was that even a staged or art department kind of room or was that your place? Uh, it was, it was kind of staged, but just naturally, like how, how would we actually put this together if we were, had this and, um, yeah, it was, it was natural. Yeah. I'd say. Um, so what was it like working with family? How, how, uh, voluntary or how willing were they? Well, they couldn't say no, I feel like, but I didn't put them <laughs> through not? a lot. Uh, did you bribe them or a... too nice? Too nice. I mean, I, yeah, I asked them to do a lot, and I don't know. They they went along with it for the most part. Um, uh, and you know, something like my mom didn't even know what the hell is going on. She would, she was just like, yeah, just come, and you, you're playing this person, and you're just coming to the house to do this. You know, didn't even mention like the wider story. Um, so it was kind of like that, more controlled. Um, yeah, I mean, I. Was, yeah, well, hey, man, I tried to I tried to you know get my family members or friends just to do something in front of camera that's not even this uh, significant <laughs> and it, right they they can't hold it together for more than yeah. ten seconds. So how do you get them to do? I mean, and they're excellent too. I mean, I know they're playing themselves, I guess, but um, believable, natural, and they deliver. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just creating the environment where you know there's a lot of improv improvisation and the script you asked was only like twenty five pages long, maybe, um, which is odd for a 75 minute movie. But um, yeah, a lot of improv, a lot of just like, here's the gist of the scene. Like, how can we make this sound natural? Doing a lot of takes till we find something that felt right. And I don't know, it was kind of a documentary approach, I think. Right, overall. right. So that experience and that knowledge definitely came in handy. Yeah, and I think just, just being able to detect, because when you're making documentaries, you, everything is real. So it's just like, okay, we have to get it to feel like how it usually does. And so looking at it that way is kind of easy, that part of it anyway. Right. Uh, so you've been making documentaries for several years now? Yeah, yeah. I guess it's been like 15 years-ish or something. And, yeah. and your own or working on other people's? Uh, oh. I guess both maybe. Um, yeah, I've had a couple of features that I'd say were my own. And, you know, I had partners in this, in the documentary realm as well. And yeah, it's just been, been an ongoing thing. And this was kind of like a side side project, I guess you could say. And uh, it took about eight years, you said? Uh, yeah, we shot 2014 and now it's- yeah, I guess you could say, yes, you could say like, you know, the post process took eight years because the home footage took your whole life. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've, I guess we've been working on this for a while. Then, haven't we? Um, <laughs> yeah, 87 to now, whatever that is. So it's been a while, yeah. Wow. And, and so, you know, you do your regular job, you come home and, you know, usually if you have a, a maybe even a documentary, you could speak to that, but, you know, a narrative film, it's kind of deadline driven, right? It's like, you know, I want to finish this in a year. I want to have this done in 30 days, whatever the case may be. Um, did you have that sense of time or deadline or it was just like, I come home for two hours. I feel like working on it tonight. I just couldn't let it go. I don't know. Cause every time I work on it, it's like, Oh, I made it 1% better this weekend or something. Like it always like get just a little bit better each time I worked on it. And since no one was being like, we need this now, I just tried a lot of different things and had a lot of different cuts and this is what came out in the end. So but you never, you never had any um, loss of interest or just, you know, dis no, no. In fact, I wish I would could still work on it because it's just so much fun to edit. Wow. Um, <laughs> but uh, maybe that's unusual. But I like editing, so. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm a filmmaker too. But um, you know, it, it, a lot of it sounds like your film wanted to get out there, wanted to be made. You know, sometimes movies do that; they just like they help you yeah. get made, right? Totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have never survived this whole ordeal because it has been tough over 15 years. If it wasn't. Like, right. okay, I believe in this and I think it's going to be great in the end. We'll see. So, yeah, yeah, I guess it worked out. I don't know. You see what people think. 
but I like it. I, I think it worked out. I mean, you got into this film festival, so, uh, hey. you know, and uh, audiences are seeing it. And um, the, this film has been in a few other festivals so far, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's doing pretty good, right? Yeah, it's done well so far. Yeah, especially for just a movie we made in our spare time with, I mean, zero money. There was literally no money on the project. Um, so considering yeah. all that. Yeah. Again, you might want to write a, you know, how to make your first movie book. I'm telling you, it might sell I mean, some copies. The trick is really just like, look at what you have, look at what you can do with what you have. And yeah. And it was like, okay, we have this house, we have these people, we have these home videos and that's kind of all it really took to really end the idea, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. so right. You, but you, you had the, the space and the time, the patience to take those little elements and kind of put them into the, the stew. You know, the batter and then, then they when you got the lap what was the last ingredient like you even had landlock the word the title before you had the movie right yeah right um, i mean because you know some some filmmakers like they can't name their movie it's like i got the it's like what do i call it and then they do tests and stuff like that so um what was the last thing to come together for you i mean just showing it to people i guess and just seeing if it sucked or not you know it's kind of the last thing yeah over just just over quarantine i was just finally like okay i think it's maybe done and let me just start sending it to people and just trying to talk and understand where they were coming from and what people really did, liked did or you, disliked. And did you share it with other people along the way, along the process? Kind of here and there, people mostly involved with the movie. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, I kind of this in the last year, I've been like, okay, what do you think to people I really respect and dislike that I would have been afraid to before. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you keep showing it to your mom and your brothers are going <laughs> yeah. to be supportive, right? yeah yeah this so is really good. good this is really yeah. good yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so what what did you have a challenge what was the biggest challenge making this ah jesus um just time it was always came down to time because i live in san francisco and i don't make it back to jersey that often so it was always just like like the initial shoot was only two weeks long so it was just just getting it all in just getting it all shot was always hard because it was difficult to actually be at the space I needed to be. So that was and, a Yeah, uh, uh, you live in San Francisco? Where do you live by the way? I'm just curious. Uh, I'm in Knot Hill right now. Right now, very cool. Noe yeah. Valley. Oh, is that where you're at? Yeah, so uh, hope you should come over there. there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see you at the Roxy hopefully, right? I'll be there, yeah. All yeah. right, um, yeah, we gotta meet in the real world too. Not just on Zoom. Uh, but was the house uh, actually going away? Were you going to lose that location? That, did that cause any timeliness? It's always been on everyone's mind, like, we should tear it down. Or like, I don't know. It's just been in the air for a long time. And I was like, I got to shoot this right now. But I mean, thankfully, it is still standing. But, um, you know, it is in a little bit of a disrepair. But, you know, I think the year we actually shot it was the only year we could have actually done that just just because of logistics and stuff. So what, what year was that again? 2014. And um, why was why do you guys this is kind of not related to the movie, but why you have the house? So why are you holding on to the house? Why is it? Why was it available to you? Like, is it why was it sold or torn down? Or? No, it's like my dad, he still lives there, but he lives in like one part of the house and like someone else lives in the other part. It's just a little complicated, okay. but um. I see. It's not entirely open right now where we could shoot in an empty house, let's say. Right, right. So, and and how, how did you come up with the idea of um, having your mom's character come to like look at the house? I, and I, I've had a moment like that in, in my life where I actually have gone into old houses where I grew up or people come in the house where I live, you know, how did that, where did you get that inspiration? Totally. Uh, that was real life again. That was because um, the, house, the house is very old and we were, you know, way way down the chain of people that have lived there so my mom she used to tell me a story i don't remember this but she used to tell me yeah this woman used to come by the house who used to live here and like she would always want to visit mm. and look at it and she mentioned like she always wanted to look at the closet and i was like doing the movie like i want to have a scene like that so i got my mom to actually play the woman that would come by because she would have some memory of it or some idea of how those visits would go so i was like oh this is perfect she could just play that person um so yeah it's just real life yeah very cool uh and then uh, again i kind of know a lot now that you're a documentarian uh you know a lot of the success or power of this film is in the editing is in you know it's in the editing it's in the post uh, you made the whole thing's kind of made in post you kind of so. worked in reverse right which that's fine um 
So tell me your approach to the editing, um, maybe in film geek language too, like was there, you know, less is more or keep on static shots or, you know, what was kind of your philosophy on that? I mean, it's just what feels right. What feels yeah. right. Um, making the movie and looking at all the footage again and finding stuff you missed and just doing that process, continually refining the cut and just like, okay, what do we, what could we add to this? What do I need to, what scenes are weaker and how can we look at them and make them better? And oh, just standard editing things. I mean, right. yeah, right. it's hard to even, so much it was just like the feeling of like, this feels right. Right. And so it's hard to really describe that. Yeah, I get um, it. It's your, it's your, just your kind of uh, intuitive radar editing uh, person. I guess so, yeah. Feeling it. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, um, you get it. Can't yeah. Explain, yeah, you can't explain why, but uh, but the choice is right. And a lot of times it might just be mood and, and um, you know, because it's a moody film too. It, <laughs> it, no, really, I mean, uh, at the beginning, it's almost like it's not a horror film and the second half is the horror film, if I can be so, you know, simple. Um, because uh, I had no idea where it was going. Good. <laughs> uh, well, and yeah, good for the movie too. Good for the audience because then it keeps you watching what's happening next. Um, Hopefully. Uh, but, you know, it does take a turn at the end. And I don't know if you've seen, you know, I, you know, I grew up in the 80s where we'd go to the, the video rental store and we'd, have, we'd search for the horror R-rated movies that we weren't allowed to get and we'd see what we can sneak out with, you know, a young clerk or something like it reminds me of like i don't know if you ever heard of videodrome or you know these other kind of uh, horror movies related around video and television oh, yeah. uh it has that kind of quality to it oh yeah i mean it, it was always supposed to be like maybe this would be like a twilight zone episode kind of thing or definitely in that realm videodrome yeah um i think i watched it after we shot it <laughs> um, which is probably a mistake but uh it was great i love that movie but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, well, then you even kind of go into this other world, if you will. Um, and as a filmmaker, I want to ask how you did it. Like you know, the, the crawling scenes where he starts going through the vents oh. and it becomes, I don't know where the heck he was underground, <laughs> under the house, what, you know, where the, so um, how did you do that? Um, movie magic, I guess. No, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, I mean, there is my brother. You don't have to tell me any secrets, but you know, it's just like, <laughs> uh it's just well done it's like I, it's like where the fuck is he in this the did he have to dig holes did he dig dirt in the ground and yeah yeah part part of it is like we dug some holes part of it was my brother created some sets that we could move through um and part of it was just real life basement locations and stuff like that so and he actually crawled under our uh family's deck which was really really dangerous but uh he did that for me that was nice <laughs> Man, your family loves you. <laughs> I think I I pushed the boundaries of their love. Let's say. <laughs> they used to love you when they're making they used to. Now they're really <laughs> pissed off. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And then um, you know, your your um and maybe this was just the because of what the material lent itself, your your um economics, if you will, you know, the kind of less is more approach uh was really well done and and I think it led to the essence of the the spookiness. I think so. I mean, I think I have like a minimal style anyway, so it, it kind of just makes sense. Like, oh, we can use this and let's pull this in, and this real life thing would be good. And I guess it's a movie after that. So, yeah. Right on. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to the future work for me. What What's in your future? What do you got on the on your plate next? Uh, First off, is there anything? Uh, what's going on with this film besides playing the SF Indie Fest coming up? Uh, let's see, played it a bunch last year. Um, it was just in Fangoria magazine. If you subscribe to Fangoria, you can read a whole whole story about it, which is cool. Um, another, some other festivals coming up and a bunch I applied for and yeah, just trying to get as many eyes on it as I can. And... So you're still in the festival circuit? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, right on. Well deserved. And then what about you? What, what do you got going? Uh, coming up yeah i got some documentary stuff coming out and then we're i'm writing the next script right now um see how it turns out but, same uh, genre yeah i guess you could say that yeah yeah definitely a little bit spooky and but you know i think a little bit a little bit more money this time a little bit more uh, more more characters more more just more a little bit more okay. 
Well, don't do, don't lose your uh, your approach that you uh, on this one. I gotta uh, stay focused. No, no. That's right. That's right. <laughs> don't don't get uh, awash in the uh, you know, luxuries. <laughs> um, and uh, real quick, I wanted to ask you: any influences? Any favorite movies? What are your favorite okay. movies in this genre? Or influences? I mean, I don't know if there. I mean, I guess there definitely are a couple that just come to mind from college that like imprinted on my mind that whenever I'm making a movie, I'm just pulling from that unconsciously probably, but there's a couple like Eraserhead was a big one back then. And uh, Aguirre, The Wrath of God, the Herzog movie was a big one. Apocalypse Now is always a big one. Um, yeah. Cool, those are good yeah. ones. Yeah, French New Wave stuff, I don't know. Right. Godard, right. just just the making up oh, shit oh. as you go along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, kind of uh, interesting timing too. And a little side note anecdote here, um, having that, Bob Saget uh, clip. I know we're, that's eerie, right? I mean, that's uh, eerie. I mean, uh, and uh, changes it. the timing. <laughs> yeah, it's eerie and spooky again. Uh, um, pretty fascinating. Uh, well, cool. Um, well, thank you for being here. Congratulations on completing this uh, fun film uh, and for getting into this film festival. Yeah, thank you for and, having me. Uh, I look forward to your future movies and uh, yeah, uh, please look me up. Let's connect here in San Francisco. And if I remember uh, in your neighborhood, I'll, I'll knock on your door. Yeah. Love that. Cool, man. Well, congrats. I'll see you at the Roxy. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching uh, and supporting indie film. Uh, catch more great indie movies uh, at the San Francisco independent film festival and online at sfindie.com. All right, Paul, have a good one. Hey, see man. you again. Ciao.